Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Starting off over at cloudtimes.org, Intel and Samsung and Cisco launch an IoTivity open source standard for the Internet of Things. Uh, as part of the Open Consortium Interconnect, led by, in particular by Samsung, Intel, and Cisco, published uh, a first version of the Internet of Things source code standard, IoTivity. It will allow connected devices from different manufacturers to communicate and compete with all join standard led by Qualcomm, Microsoft, and LG. This is pretty interesting. While it has been several months since the standards war raging between consortiums of companies, it might be close to ending now. And that bipolar world of standardization, where one side is associated with 50 groups, including Samsung, Intel, and Cisco, in the Open Consortium Interconnect project, the other all-seen alliance standard is initiated by Microsoft, LG, or Qualcomm, uh, causing the all-join protocol. So, should be pretty interesting to see how all this stuff shakes out. Uh, I know uh, not everybody uh, cares so much about this, but still... Uh, you know, open source is open source, so pretty cool. From the register.co.uk, Red Hat on VCE is ESA's new tech launch pad. The European Space Agency has rolled Red Hat Enterprise Linux into its ESA cloud, an ongoing cloud computing rollout. The Red Hat Enterprise Linux is, as the company notes, just one of the platforms being used in the ESA cloud. The cloud covers software development and testing, satellite data reprocessing, document management, and other IT services. So pretty cool. Definitely uh, check it out for sure. From Tech News World, uh, Ubuntu aims to make the Internet of Things snappy. That's right. Snappy Ubuntu Core has a minimal server image with the same libraries as regular Ubuntu but it offers a simpler mechanism for obtaining applications. It's faster, more reliable, and more secure, according to Canonical. Snappy Ubuntu Core will ensure a snappy apps cannot harm the operating system and other snappy apps, says Canonical's Martin Ekdors. So, pretty interesting. Um, I'm a little curious. Uh, this is sounds kind of like uh, the mantra behind Java, where you run inside a sandbox, and you know your Java VM and code that you have inside your Java technically can't harm other things, but still uh, should be pretty interesting nonetheless. From SMN Weekly, uh, Mozilla. Uh, Let's see here, from SMN Weekly, oh, come on, go away. All right, Mozilla, the company behind the third-party open-source web browser Firefox, has announced it will be providing enhanced support for the Oculus Rift virtual reality headset. That is right. New experimental builds of Mozilla's flagship web browser now allow Oculus Rift VR users to use Firefox to explore 3D environments. Mozilla's engineering director, Vlad Volkovic, sorry if I uh, totally slaughtered that there, uh, says that this is a major step forward. Previously, the company had a separate build of the web browser that was designed around VR development efforts. That was a standalone and infrequently updated project that often lagged behind uh, in terms of feature sets of other builds. But now with VR support integrated into the core web browser, Volkovic remarked that developers working with the Oculus software development kit should have better tools at their disposal. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, Oculus Rift has been one of those things that's been really popular um, 
and uh, you know, unsurprisingly, it's been really popular. So, should be pretty interesting to see um, what comes of that. From uh, ZDNet.com, Samsung hops back on the Android bandwagon with printers. Samsung Australia has announced the availability of its first Android-powered printer range, according to Samsung. The Smart Multi-Press series will include eight multifunction device printer models, all of which have been designed to operate independently without the need for a PC app. Each printer will be powered by the Android operating system, which means the printers will have great printing app scalability, the company said, similar to its smartphone technology. Uh, you know, I I don't know about so much about that, but... Uh, Still, it should be pretty interesting nonetheless. From uh, linuxgizmos.com, Tizen-based Samsung cameras and round smartwatch have been leaked. Recent leaks show the three new Samsung Tizen devices, a pair of cameras, and a round-faced Orbis watch with a digital crown, bezel, and wireless charging. Uh, earlier in the month, Samsung announced that Tizen would fuel all of its 2015 smart TVs. And last week, when Samsung finally launched its first Tizen phone, the India-targeted Z1, the consumer electronics giant made its most ambitious claims about Tizen to date. By the end of the decade, many, if not most, Samsung products can be can capably run Tizen. That can capably run Tizen will indeed run Tizen, said the company. This is really weird because, um, you know, Samsung has really flip-flopped a lot on Tizen, and I think they're trying to find a way to integrate it because they've spent a ton of money developing it, right, with, in conjunction with Intel. And it's, it's one of those things where they just, they're also really committed to Android, too. It's almost like there are two internal development teams. One is Tizen and one is Android. And, you know, Samsung as a company is attempting to find uh, the appropriate thing to do with Tizen because they've spent a ton of money with it, on it. So I'm curious to see uh, what will come of it. It shows here the uh, Samsung NX500 and NX3300. Um, they're uh, both uh, cameras based off of uh, Tizen. Uh, should be pretty interesting. The Orbis smartwatch, they have a drawing for it. Uh, so it looks an awful lot like the Motorola Moto360 smartwatch. So it should be pretty interesting to see uh, what comes from that. Uh, on the security front, Valve is investigating a scary-sounding Steam bug on Linux. This is over at PCGamer.com. A friendly word of advice for anyone running Steam on Linux, do not manually move your Steam directory from its default location. Users have reported that doing so has resulted in the deletion of everything in their directory trees, including, in at least one case, backups on an external drive. Wow. Wow. The problem first came to light last week by way of GitHub user Kevin, who moved his Steam folder to a new location but was but was then unable to launch it, even after browsing and pointing to the new location. After a crash and restart, it reinstalled itself and all appeared well until he looked and saw that Steam had apparently deleted everything owned by his user recursively from the root directory, including his 3 terabyte external drive that he backs everything up to that was mounted under slash media. So this is, uh, potentially, this is, this is bad. So I don't have any other update on it other than that at this point, but still, wow. Uh, from sdtimes.com, the Linux Foundation publishes an open source cloud guide. This is pretty uh, interesting. When the Linux Foundation first published its guide to the open cloud in 2013, the pickings were slim and from a bygone era. Today, however, the guide for 2015 is packed with information on the open source projects that are quickly becoming part of the new model for cloud software stacks. The 2015 guide states that cloud software has matured significantly since 2013 and is advocating the maturity of software combined with increased enterprise cloud adoption uh, has created a growing interest in and demand for open source solutions from cloud service providers and companies alike. 
So pretty cool. Definitely check it out. It's an interesting read to say the least. That will do it for this edition of Linux Newslog. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing to the show and supporting it. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.